Hello and welcome to Creativity in Progress with your hosts, Nate, Ari, and me, Ethan. This is a show where we create a story from the ground up and you get to help. Here's how we do it. We come up with a list of genres and assign them a random number. Then we're going to roll our trusty CIP dice on air and determine the genre the story based on what we roll. Afterwards, we repeat the process for our setting and a few character archetypes. Then we'll take all these yummy ingredients and brains from a, a delicious narrative in a virtual writer's room. Now, while we create the story, we'll have a corresponding art being made for you fine folks to see in the live stream by our very own Ari. All right, now since this is part two of our current story, uh, we won't have to roll for any of these things I just mentioned. However, we will be, uh, if, you look, if, you're looking, if you're watching us or joining us right now on the Twitch live stream, you can see what we've actually done in the previous episode. So what I'll do right now next is a quick recap of everything, and then we'll get the show started. All right, so here we go. The genre we rolled last time was fairy tale. Uh, the setting was icy mountains or uh, kind of cold tundra. The time we rolled was future. Our protagonist is a mercenary. We named him or her the champion. And our antagonist that we rolled is a mystic. Uh, we named her the Ice Queen. Um, and we decided to come up with the actual name for all this as the mercenary and the queen. Uh, now, Sigma, here are some of the main uh, highlights from the first episode that we came up with. The opening line for this fairy tale would be, once upon a future, it was cold. It opens with a tournament of champions to determine who will be sent out to slay the Ice Queen. It's a massive last man standing brawl in a futuristic coliseum. Uh, our hero, the champion, emerges the victor and is sent uh, on their mission to slay the Ice Queen. The champion heads towards where the coldest wind blows. That's kind of his, his marker as to where the Ice Queen is located. On their journey, the, the, the champion comes across the corpse of a previous champion and finds a clue on their body. Uh, it's a simple graphic or image of a harp, like a musical harp. Um, then we cut to the past, um, but which seems like an ongoing storyline, which is actually um, revealed to be a huge gala where an orchestra is playing music. And this is where we see our Ice Queen character uh, for the first time. Uh, and she's young and happy and enjoying festivities of the gala All awesome right. and nice. mm -hmm. uh, all right and that's it uh, story over okay thanks for coming everybody um <laughs> <no>. <laughs> have a great time <laughs> um well i think uh i i think we should add what everybody wants zombies um no for for real no, um please no, <laughs> <laughs> please, no. <laughs> Um, well, um, I'm just being facetious. Uh, so, uh, so where, where we left off was essentially starting with the uh, Queen's backstory. Um, we said the gala would be the introduction. What, like, so I guess where where do we want to go from there? Like, what what we 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 briefly talked about her motivation, but what do we kind of want her motivation to be? Yeah, excellent question. So I think we. Well, we discussed last time that we wanted it to be relatable and um, uh, like this is a sympathetic villain. Um, yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree. Because I think, you know, if it's like, you know, they, my subjects don't love me. It's like, well, really? Uh, yeah, you know? no, no. <laughs> Who cares? And, and, and exactly. good for you. Yeah. So I, I mean, at bare minimum, it should obviously be that this queen is likable. It's mm -hmm. at least seen likable and seen as a good person in the past or starts yeah. in that place. Uh -huh. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. more or less a fall from grace um, or a tragic kind of ending that she happens, mm -hmm. that happens upon her. Mm -hmm. so Something she, happens to her for her entire demeanor to change and yes. then she retreats into the, you know, mm -hmm. the, the cold bat cave. <laughs> 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 right. Well, this this reminds me of um, the where we were going at, and I've been thinking about this uh, in the week in between the, these two episodes. Um, have y'all? So I'm sure y'all have heard of Wicked, right? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have you read the book? I have I, not. Okay. I will admit that I didn't even know there was a book. Yeah. There, oh, yeah. There's a there's a whole book series by uh, Gre uh, Gregory McGuire, I think. Um, 
uh, the who. Uh, yeah, it's it, what he does is he he takes uh, stories like um, the Wizard of Oz and tells it from a different perspective. Um, that's kind of his gimmick. Uh, and Wicked was the first one that he did that really hit big. Um, and uh, it's it's actually a, a fantastic. Like I highly recommend it. It's really good. But but the book is vastly different than the musical. Uh, it's very um from it's very interesting and deep and and all that so i highly recommend it check it out but one of the the whole points of it is that um he is that the wicked witch is she's kind of this is one piece that's the same as musical she's kind of misunderstood and the whole thing of her going off into the into the western like she's the wicked wicked the wicked wicked witch of the west um yeah, and she's off her, to say, man. yeah it's like um uh but she you know she's off in her castle uh and and everybody thinks she's you know this evil like plotting to kill everybody and really she just she just wants to be left alone she was just treated poorly her entire life due to her skin uh her skin color because she was born green yes, green and yeah and she just she just kind of wanted to be left alone it was just crap and 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 just ah life sucks and um and so it kind of reminds me of that, like that whole thing Ooh. of like where she she's uh, like, I kind of like that idea of like, good. yeah, like something yeah. happens this and she just kind of goes off right. and they're like, Meh. yes, I, I like that idea a lot. So there are two things that came up from what you just said that reminded me of. So I did see some of the James Franco Mila Kunis movie. Uh, was it called um, Oz? Braden, it was, it was, I think it was called Oz, like the Braden Powell or whatever it was that okay. Sam Raimi directed. Mm-hmm. But uh, part of it was as it as it gave kind of like a prequel story to the Wicked Witch, quote unquote Wicked Witch. Mm-hmm. It did show that she, it did show from her the story from her perspective uh-huh. how she was kind of treated you know in a different way. That mm-hmm. made her in in, a, in in some capacity you see her more as a the victim as opposed to just the uh, uh, assaulter. Uh-huh. Um, so I think one thing we could do is because you mentioned the green skin, it could be that our queen here, this character, it could be that she is even though she is the queen. She could have some kind of a physical disability or mm-hmm. some kind of a, something with her appearance or something that makes her stand out or seem odd. And that can either, she can either be teased, teased by it, teased for it, or um, she can be kind of, um, I guess, like uh, ostracized for mm-hmm. it in some capacity, something that mm-hmm. because well, here's of my my question about that because are we doing where like she's universally loved at first as a queen uh mm-hmm. like we discussed last time um or i mean how would that work because if she if she was like teased and stuff then that really wouldn't work with that idea uh-huh right yeah if, if she yeah yeah i know what you're saying i think it would be that it probably if she starts off being younger um, and maybe she isn't necessarily universally loved, but if she's, I guess, young enough to be a princess at this point, and mm-hmm. she still has her family, she still has the actual king and queen, her parents are still around, and she's kind of an awkward teenager, perhaps, or an awkward 20-something-year-old, well, she wouldn't necessarily have to be universally loved yet. Well, one, one thing yeah. it could be, um, if, uh, you know, like, a, and I, just an idea is maybe maybe this is set where she hasn't become queen yet. This is a princess, like you said. And so her, you know, father or mother or somebody is is the current queen. And something happens maybe after the ball, you know, maybe some further down the line, something, but something happens where everybody in her family is killed in a ice related situation and they think it's her. And and the and and her kingdom thinks that she killed her family to get power, but that isn't really what happened and she tries to rule i'm just i'm just throwing out the idea and seeing it was the full idea and then see what you guys think um and and that and she she tries to rule and then it just it just becomes more and more and there's a there's an opposing faction that begins to rise up and that's what sends her off into the world i really like that that's yeah i like that a lot too it it is very fairy tale the idea that it's um the the good-hearted person who's you know blamed for something they didn't they didn't do and kind of has to find a way to survive on their own because of that. Uh, so I guess rewinding a, a, a few paces, it sounds, so what you said basically is there's an isolated incident that, incident that happens that mm-hmm. ends up killing her entire family. Mm-hmm. 
So do you want this ice related incident to be something that she does directly cause, even though it was accidental or that it's like, say, for example, someone launches an ice bomb and she happens to survive it. Mm -hmm. Something that she had, something that's ex completely external that she had no control over. How do you want to play that? I, I don't know. I like maximum drama all the time. So um, <laughs> I like the idea that she did it, but she didn't mean to, or she did it out of self-defense and it was something she had no control over. And so her solution uh -huh. to not hurt anyone else is to run away. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. I, like that. I, I think, I think we're kind of dancing on the idea that she obviously has some kind of ice powers. Uh-huh. Yeah. I thought um, we had <laughs> agreed no, on that. No, no, I mean, I mean, I mean, from the start, like almost like a mutant, she has the powers already. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing the origin of how she gets the powers; she already has them. Mm -hmm. that's okay. What it sounds like. Okay. Hmm. Well, oh, that's, that's, that's a really good point because what if, what if in getting the powers, maybe she she goes on a quest or something, she finds something that is like you know it it gives people icy powers, but she doesn't know that. Um, she brings it home and then accidentally kills everybody. Mm -hmm. I well, I, I really. That, that oh, 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 we, we can cut. Sorry, go ahead, Nate. Go ahead. Well, I was I was just gonna say I, I was just gonna say that um I really like um I really like the idea of of may, maybe like you mentioned mutants so my 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 brain immediately went to X Men and, and in the X Men they hit adolescent and that's when their powers go and there's a really great story in Ultimate X Men where a kid gets his power and his power is that his essentially his B O kills everybody and so yeah, no, everybody really like everybody in his family in his town die because he becomes a mutant and my so my my Th thought immediately goes to well what if when her powers pop it they literally pop and it's and it kills her family and you know that's so, so just throwing that out there just another thought uh, i like that i idea like that a lot. a lot but it's also very comic booky and i and it's also very elsa yeah it's, that's what uh, i say it's, it's a little too elsa it's, a, it's almost well, actually, yeah, i feel like we should probably not go like a, a super well, similar but it's but it kind of isn't though because elsa had her powers from birth she did. I, I, she did, but, I, yeah, but they were they were they were hers. I guess that's the thing we're already saying. Is that they also have their powers. They're, they're inherently, birth. yeah. They're in, yeah. They don't yeah, come they into just... power of prominence until they're teenagers. But yeah, they have exactly. them from birth. Oh wow. Well. So what if we do it this way? What if we cut to the chase? You, I think already mentioned the idea of like Elsa going that Elsa. I called her. I even called her Elsa. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Hey, we were doing Mandalorian last week, so you know. We, 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 yeah. woman, 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 though. So what if we cut to the chase that as opposed to our icy oh, queen nice. character uh, having to actually go out on a quest and find this this ability that gives the ice powers. What if this is the this ceremony that's that's actually happening, this big gala is actually a, a kind of a coronation ceremony for our queen. Maybe her parents or family or maybe it's her turn to actually become yeah. christened in some way. Either to become queen or it's a cotillion or whatever it is. And an object is brought to the kingdom mm -hmm. and it's presented to her. And this object kind of awakens her abilities. And okay. at the gala, um the, the the maybe the object that, that's brought to her is a crown maybe and it's a, it's a very Ooh, special okay, crown so, that's a glistening mm -hmm. mm, I don't see okay I don't like the abilities thing but I do like this cursed object cursed being there, brought okay, to her okay I, I, I'm, no. I'm locking that in cursed object and put that there okay. okay and and one thing I do want to say feels, though oh, oh good okay, sorry it just feels um. It feels way more fairy tale ish, uh, mm -hmm. and like also, you know, like they're all rival kingdoms want to, you know, take down her kingdom, and mm -hmm. so they target the queen's daughter, mm -hmm. and then she ends up killing everyone and then um, escaping. Yeah. Yes. I like that. Uh, okay, so it, this was a, a malicious act. So what we're saying is this at this coronation ceremony, coronation ceremony of sorts, mm -hmm. that it, essentially a uh, kingdom assassin of sorts deliberately brings a cursed object into the kingdom under the guise of it being a, a present for our queen to be. Mm -hmm. And once mm -hmm. it's presented to this queen to be, he doesn't even know himself entirely what this curse or hers doesn't know what this object would do. And it, what ends up happening is it, of course, causes essentially her powers or whatnot to mm -hmm. awaken or it gives her it gives her evil powers, more or less, or causes an evil reaction, which ends well up being the ice thing. Okay, well, let me let me throw out there one thing um, because we're trying not to be, uh, we're trying not to be Elsa. Um, <laughs> try, let's try. not let's not have it be at the coronation, because that okay. was the whole plot of the first Frozen movie <laughs> was that okay. her powers were revealed to everybody at the coronation. So, um, so in well, the maybe spirit, it's a marriage, 
marriage um, ceremony. I like the public aspect of it because yeah. that means maximum death. Okay. Yes, yes, but also because it would be, it would be presented that way, mm-hmm. all the witnesses we could have it set up that all the witnesses that would actually see what really happened would die then. Yeah, so she has no way to explain herself. So yeah. I, I agree with Ari though. We don't want this or Nate. I guess we don't need to necessarily do it right off the bat because this is a we're doing parallel stories essentially. So we don't necessarily need to see at this point at the beginning of the ceremony. We don't need to see it all go to shit immediately. Oh, yeah, what yeah, we can yeah. do then is actually kind of deceive the idea that it's a happy time. Maybe it is a marriage ceremony that she is. A, things are going pretty well. I guess that would have to be marriage because she's, if she's coming to becoming queen, that's part of it. I think it's marriage mm-hmm. queen possibly or whatnot. Well, but. maybe let's maybe let's not make it. Hmm. Maybe I think what it would kind of be the drama. Maybe have her not be the focus of the event. Like maybe yes. it's a marriage of her younger sister or something. Um. Or something oh, like that. There's like a set, a set of items, gifts given, yeah. and she being a precocious or you know like impatient, um, just really wants to feel pretty or something. Uh, puts her little circlet on or touches whatever gift it is first, mm-hmm. instead of the queen or who it's supposed to go to oh, or something. Okay, okay, yes. And then that, I like that. makes it. So this is actually an ice princess, and the actual queen... yeah. But then she would be in in killing her mother. Yeah, oh no, I agree. I yes, yes. I like that a lot. Okay, all right, perfect. So actually, we ironically enough, this is actually the story of a good-hearted princess uh-huh. that is precocious and young. Well, then, but but then she queen. becomes queen, and then so that's she why she does become queen. Yeah, she We're seeing how she becomes and... queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so good-hearted uh-huh. princess, um, and it's at least, and, 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 and do we want to have it actually be a marriage? This is a marriage. This get together is a marriage ceremony, or is more or less just a festival? Um, hmm. Or a, how about a birthday party of some kind? They're celebrating birthday. The I like birthday. Like like maybe. I like birthday a lot. That's yeah. very Sleeping Beauty, and I enjoy that. Yeah, it's a fairy tale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not. It's not our princess again. Like Ari said, this is actually that's kind of the misdirect. This yeah. is actually the birthday of the queen or the king or one of them. I guess yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, and that could be it too. We could actually kind of think we're, that we're, we're expecting at it to be the queen. Exactly. That's the point. Yeah. We're, we're expecting all this, and that's part of the reveal as the uh, story yeah. goes on. We're actually we're thinking, oh, we're watching the story of this queen, what she's doing, and it turns out this is actually the princess's story we're actually watching. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Then. Um, and I had and I had another thought. Um, and I know we had kind of said this last week, where the mercenary is somebody from from the queen's past in in this scenario but i really like the idea now that we've made it like everybody dies and we think that the mercenary was one of the people who died but they weren't and i think that that i think that really kind of maximizes the reveal a little bit there um uh for that because you think like you know like oh maybe it's the and i want to say like my my gut wants to say little sister because you know but but then again elsa anna also, you know you know um that's yeah. that's very again frozen yeah yes and, and, but, and we can we can definitely figure out the who our woman though is a little bit later on but I, yeah but like you said though it's we're figuring out that there is i, I think the idea of it still being somehow connected to this person because obviously they, they care about ultimately Ooh. There are, are go ahead Nate. oh oh sorry 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 um uh just had an idea um uh we can thank sophia the first for this one um so uh uh instead of instead of a sister have it be a friend have it be a close friend but not only not not any close friend and this also kind of goes into the good heartedness it is like a servant girl in the castle that this princess has befriended it's the princess's friend that's a servant girl that's a and and pretty much have like her parents are frowning on dissociating with servants exactly exactly Exactly. this is in a way this is like her samwise uh and and because of this because she's but but a servant i guess she could be more or less excused from the party during the big huge thing and because she's excused she Uh survives exactly right right oh maybe maybe she's like she is like helping to serve um during the party but um she Gets sent away, maybe. Yeah, like goes down to the something. kitchen to get maybe something. To, to, yeah, to fetch something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And then when she comes back, everyone's dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh perfect. God. Perfect. No, I mean, that's, I mean that's horrible, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> horrible, but also perfect. Horrible, but also perfect. Okay, so I'm lock- so I'm locking it in. I'm locking it in that the ceremony is for the queen's birth. Um, we're seeing the queen look at all of her. I guess we're, we're seeing the princess admire and examine. All the presents that are mm-hmm. given to her, 
Yep. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's just one present. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just the crown. And so, and then she just tries it on. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so, maybe. Uh, I, guess, I guess that's the big thing, too. Uh, what is the cursed object? The harp obviously isn't the cursed object. That's, that's not yeah. possible to get. But the, what is the cursed object itself? I think it should be a crown. Uh, like, cause that, I think it should be a crown, too. Yeah, because yeah, I think, like, because right. I'm imagining, like, because it's kind of a, you know, especially, like, I would imagine in royalty, like, it's a bit of a no-no for, for a princess to put on the crown of a queen, you know, ahead of time. Yes. And so, like, exactly. yeah, so I think I think that that would be a great thing. Okay. All right. All right. I'm locking it in. The, cur the cursed object itself is, in fact, a crown. Now, this crown of sorts, the crown was, was meant to be a gift, what had, or, or is presented as a gift but it's i guess it's sitting off somewhere else it's or it's sitting in a place that no one is, is supposed to touch it but our precocious yeah, i think it's probably sitting here. you remember um the king even um oh, where the, yeah with Tim, timothy chalamet yeah the movie yeah, on netflix yes yeah. of course so he was receiving all those gifts and they were in a place of honor where nobody yes. else was touching them yes. um until he tried them on or not tried them on, but like accepted them. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably the same situation. So the crown is like, maybe it's on display, and that's why the princess was like, pretty, want to touch. Uh -huh. um, but obviously the etiquette is that nobody touches it, and it's only at a place where the royal family can access it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe, it, yeah. Yeah, like maybe there's like a, a room off to the side of the main ballroom that is like kind of like the gift room. And uh, and it's it's where like people can walk by, but they're not really supposed to go in unless they're the royal family. And so that's why she was able to go in. But then she, you know, goes even further. Right. And yeah. we could even, if you wanted to, I'm not sure if it'd be too, too cliche, but you could even have it that her little friend, the because we have to introduce her in this flashback or flash sideways whatever, at, at some time. So it oh. could be that, that 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 she's trying to tell her not to do this. Basically, what are you doing? This is wrong, or or, or maybe maybe we shouldn't do this. And she's like, oh, maybe don't. um the servant girl uh has a key or something to get into the room, mm -hmm. um, oh. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yes. so the princess was like, hey, can you help me out? I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I really want to. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, because what's ha what happens here then is because if the if our servant girl is in some way an accessory to this she will also feel a sense of guilt that this happened yeah yeah she, yeah. Mm -hmm. she has to make it right she and, has to make it yeah. right yes yeah okay honor honor bound as well as duty bound okay all right mm -hmm. so all right so i'll say the princess catches a glimpse of a beautiful glowing crown in a even through a keyhole or something to this you know in the present room mm -hmm. yeah all right all and right. her and her servant friend now, do we want to come up with any name, names for these people? Oh, yeah. yeah, we should probably come up with names. Okay. Or, or, or we can decide names later. We can do like a poll or something. Okay, okay. I'm yeah. up for that too. I'm up for that as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I I'm good for that. Deciding names is really hard for me especially, and I feel like we might get bogged down by yeah, yeah. them. So we can just do it later and then have people help us choose which ones. I agree. Now, uh, so what, what I think what we can do is because there's still we're in – this is essentially the first act for our queen's story. So because of that, I think we should we should end her story, this flashback side, the story more or less, at the point where she's getting ready to go into the, the door is maybe even unlocked, and she's getting ready to go into the room with the crown. End it there, um, on somewhat of a cliffhanger, and then cut back again to our um, our mercenary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, um, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like have, uh, and I, th I think something that that um, uh, that definitely this scene could be used for is is to establish, like obviously to, to establish this this princess that she's really good and and not you know evil in any way and and you know but just maybe a little precocious and and just kind of establish mm -hmm. all of that and then get the setup and then you know and then and then the, maybe maybe the blast is what carries us back. Oh yes. yeah. Oh, I like I like the idea of showing her as being kind of this selfish kid who just yes. is, you know, she's a princess, she's got she's spoiled. Um mm -hmm. everything has been handed to her and so she can feel, she feels like she can do anything she wants. And then mm -hmm. when we return to her story, 
I mean, we don't, we we're like, uh, but when we return to her story and see how upset she is and how she didn't mean for any of this to happen, you're, you're like, Oh, well, that's understandable. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then having, and then having to deal with the fallout of like, now she's supposed to be the ruler, but yet some of her subjects think that she did this on purpose and, you know, and, and all of that. Okay. Perfect. So, so we're deciding that at this point in the story that, that this, this particular story uh, part of the story is going to end before it cuts flashes back to the mercenary. It'll end with her actually holding the sacred cursed crown in her hands and then go mm -hmm. back or kind of mm -hmm. almost like Aladdin walking towards the lamp, like it's, it's glowing mm -hmm. and calling her name essentially. And she picks it up and we don't see what's going to happen next. Kind of I kind of have this idea in mind of this shot of her hands just touching the crown as she goes to pick it up. You don't see her face. It's just a shot of her hands. Perfect. Oh, and yeah, yeah. We, That's very fair too. Okay. Yep, I'm walking it in. I'm walking it in. Okay. Awesome. So it'll end with the princess's hand going towards, almost being beckoned by the crown itself. Well, maybe the object. cutaway is right before she touches it. Yes, of course, of course, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like yeah. I like that. I like that. Because it's it's almost like the, the the princess herself is a victim of the crown. The princess was seduced by it. She didn't. Yeah, you know, of course. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's, it's like the ring with Frodo or whatnot. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right, I'm walking it in. All right. And um, I'm trying to think, uh, what would be, I'm trying to think of what carries us back to. Um... Oh. oh, no, I don't know if that would work. Maybe, <laughs> so, all right, so I, I think visually, obviously. So we we have this shot of her hands going to touch the crown right before she touches it. It snaps back. We can go to a shot of the mercenary touching something. Yeah, Jordan. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. To, to show the uh, the parallel parallels in the stories. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Um, now, the the thing about it is, so we I feel like we have to follow up. We, we, we're doing set up some payoffs here. The last thing that the, that the mercenary was dealing with was, of course, finding the image of the harp. And I think we talked last time about how that harp could be used or should be used to do something in his his world as far as or her world, as far as like either it can open or separate a. a a river or it's used to summon a beast so the next thing that should happen is obviously it's him or her sorry getting that harp we want but i think we should have it that it, it's not just given to him he has to obviously slay a beast or fight something or do, do some kind of a trial to get this uh, mm -hmm. harp. yeah um well she she sees like she sees that she has to get the harp and she's like ah crap uh-huh uh because uh, she knows that it's it's gonna be hard to get uh i just don't know what what should the trial be? Yes. What? Yeah. What? What's the trial, or who does she have to steal it from, or something? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's what we need to figure out. Okay. So now we're dealing with the world of fairy tales, and in fairy tales, there's there's usually different types of creatures and uh, classes of beasts and that kind of stuff. We could either go the route of having it that is like it's it's protected by, um, like a like a giant cyclops, uh, uh some kind of a werewolf beast. I, uh, I, you know, see, I like icy theme so mm -hmm. maybe we should do like an ice type beast okay I like that too uh, almost like a wendigo or like an ice um bigfoot type of creature maybe and yeah, like a <laughs> like a uh crap what are the star wars the yeti yeah, yes. oh yeah um but Bam is it bantha is that what it's called nate um, no, no, no. Uh, that is what you ride in tattoo. Right. Yeah. One, but it's the one, about the one that, that grabs Luke and hangs him upside down. Oh, and yeah. Cut off, yeah. Like that thing. Yeah, yeah. something uh, like that. Womp, uh, that. Wampa? Is it Wampa? Wampa? Is it Wampa? Oh, I can't. I we, can't we remember. You can look it up, but that's cheating. That's cheating. Yeah, yeah, that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wrong. Um, be wrong. Uh, but yeah, so I, we, I like we, that. We, yeah. We can call it a, a Snow Yeti for now. That's basically the same idea. And it's, and it's, un, and it's unlicensed as well. So we'll yes. call it a Snow Yeti. Snow Yeti. Snow Yeti. I'm pretty sure Yeti is already snow. Yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. I think Bigfoot is unsnow. So yeah, we'll let's call it Yeti. Non -snow. Yeah. Okay. So, but we'll, so we'll call it just a Yeti of some kind. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, well, yeah, I, I like that. I think I also, um, I, I I also want to try to as part of like in whatever the whatever part of the trial is, I want there to be some sort of mechanized part of the trial too, to also to just try to continue okay. bringing in the future <laughs> element. Keep forgetting. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's my bad. That's my bad. You're 100% right. Yeah, I okay. 
we had we had we do have to acknowledge the, the friggin' setting we're set in. Well, I don't think I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that we're approaching it the way we are. But I think if we can, if because you know, like I said, you know, you take you take the Star Wars story and you strip out all the spaceships and change like change ships with horses and and this sort of thing. Like you can, like it it, it would still make sense. Um, uh, but I think if we just try to remember to sprinkle those elements in, I think it would really, um, really help. Yeah, yes. I agree. So we can, I mean, the easiest way I think off the top is more or less that he has to, I'm sorry, he is using some piece of equipment or a gadget. Um, when we cut back, she's following like the, the trail of a, of a, a gadget or whatnot to actually figure out where this, she's going to actually have to show her on this whole long trial to figure out where the, where the harp is. Uh -huh. He's pretty much at the door of where the or at the cave or whatnot of where this harp is. Uh -huh. So you there. don't the the part in Star Wars um, where Luke goes to the the hut's um, base mm -hmm. to go. I know uh, exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that would be pretty cool because we don't have to do necessarily a lot with the with um, the technology. Uh, we can do we can make it so the setting itself is you know mm -hmm. with the technology so she has this thing that leads her places um mm -hmm. and then she can come to this like this um say it say it <laughs> <laughs> i said like a nice palace like um, an ice where, palace of sorts or what have you yeah like this 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 palace that's or or this hideout or this something like or other yeah. um where it's it's very obvious that the technology here is is like it's kind of grimy but and grimy and like uh soviet almost Ooh, um like siberian because it's cold yeah. yeah right 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 um and that would be like obviously we're in the future here but the story itself is very fairy tale -y. I don't uh -huh. know any of that but... no I, I like that a lot what if that's what happens actually so um, a mercenary goes to what looks like essentially a grimy Siberian ice palace of sorts, and she's at the door. And the, the I guess <laughs> almost following the, in the footsteps of the huts in uh, Return of the Jedi, like a, some kind of a futuristic eye, like greets her to see what's, what she wants, and mm -hmm. she just holds up the image of, because it was an actual kind of graphic or whatnot she got off the corpse of the previous champion. She just mm -hmm. holds up that, right. that image uh, or the hologram of that harp. Uh -huh. and, the, and the eye scans it, acknowledges it, and then opens the door. It opens uh -huh. the door to her. Mm -hmm. And she walks into this giant, like, elaborate, but still very uh, ominous-looking kind of chamber room, essentially. Mm -hmm. And that's where our Yeti, I'm sorry, yeah, Yeti, Yeti works. Yeti could, could even be, seen, be, be sitting in a throne of sorts, like an ice throne. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we can make him that's sentient. Cool. We could, he doesn't have to be a mindless creature. He could actually be sentient and capable of, of talking and whatnot. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, because most fairy tales, my favorite one of all time is Puss in Boots, where he's actually, where Puss is very clever, and all his opponents are clever enough, too, and they all have conversations, then they engage in a battle of sorts. We actually uh -huh. could have it that our mercenary tries to reason with the uh, Yeti first, mm -hmm. and, the, and the Yeti more or less laughs it off, and has nothing, wasn't care at all ooh, about this. But, it could be, um, it could be that, so, okay, so... She shows the image to the eye who lets her in, and you get the sense that, okay, so if you do that, they'll let you in, but why? And then maybe it's like the Yeti um, has uh, whoever challenges this has them play a game, and if they win, um, then they can they can take the harp. But nobody's ever won because Perfect. the Yeti harp dirty. Now, that's the beauty. Uh, I'm, yes. um, I'm locking it in. I'm locking it in. Okay. Unless, you have, unless you oppose to it, Nate. I'm not locking that one in. Oh, no, yeah, no, no, that's fine. That sounds great to me. Okay. All right. Uh, so now the, the next thing is what kind of a game? And I imagine the, the Yeti wants to play to his strength in some capacity. If the uh -huh. Yeti yeah. is obviously a beast, the game would almost be of strength, but not necessarily just strength, uh, but something that's... Strength and wits, because and wits. she... Our, our protagonist will realize that okay so this is obviously stacked in their favor there's no possible way i'm going to win unless i get clever uh-huh yes yes yeah um, yeah it could be that the yeti himself just doesn't fight 
he has someone else do it for him. Mm -hmm. That's possible too. Or it could be that the room is is kind of booby trapped. And I, that's, 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 I was going to say the exact same thing. But it's just, uh, remember, he's he's on his home turf. The Yeti knows what he's doing. It's, it's his home. It's, it is it's his palace. So he's uh -huh. going to use that. He's, he's going to use his his terrain. His sorry, his surroundings to his advantage too. Yeah, mm -hmm. the same thing. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm locking that in. That it's a game that they're playing, or uh, essentially they're playing a game for the harp. Um, and the game involves the Yeti using the palace to his advantage. In some capacity. So mm -hmm. most palace, if you think about the layout of a palace, a palace typically has those large pillars mm -hmm. that go up and down. These are now these are ice pillars. You also could have icy spikes on the ceiling or the floor too. Um, there's a different ways we can approach this. We I mean, also... it's very like it's a very obstacle course type thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, like we can get full Indiana Jones with this. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you? I in God's name, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, you could have like, um, yeah, like you could have like the blades flying to go. Oh, and also, you know, lasers. Um, have lasers flying through. Um, um, you know, like yeah, we could have like. So I think I think what we can do with this is we can just have like we can just say that it's like booby trapped and 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 that sort of thing, and then, um, and then, but but obviously the mercenary is able to, you know, yeah, best it, and then they get the harp. Mm, now what? <laughs> yes, and we'll have it that the mercenary, of course, uses all of his her uh, tricks and stuff and gadgets that she has with her, uh -huh. uh, her person. To, to right. Survive. I mean, like she's survive. forced also to play dirty, so she does. Yeah. So she yeah. Does. And she and she ends up and she ends up coming victor coming out victorious, uh, and mm -hmm. ends up with the with the uh, harp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna lock it in. That she's what, mercenary. I forget what we decided the harp does. We hadn't come to an official. Okay, we get uh, we gotta figure that out. Okay. Yeah. My my thinking was more or less along the lines of Zelda and Link, where Link would use the ocarina to like play a song and get something from it because it's oh, a harp. Oh, maybe it's a great freaking harp. Oh yes, there we go. Bing, bing. Honestly, so, duh. So the harp, <laughs> the, the harp. The, when so when she plays the harp, it just removes. Now it can't completely eliminate all the. The curse, but you mean that it, it can remove ice where she is, where she needs to, or it well, can be used okay, to slay so the princess. The well, the princess is. Hmm. Okay, so I think probably the information that the mercenary has is that the harp will defeat the princess, who is now a queen. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's all that she knows. But when it comes to it, she plays the harp. Um, and it lifts the curse from the queen. Mm -hmm. So it makes all the iciness and all the like the quote unquote evil um, leave her. Mm -hmm. uh, and thus, uh, you know, it gives her a chance to be happy again. Uh huh. Okay. So it's not like a, it's not like a, I'm going to kill you uh, or, or, it's not like it will kill her. Um, probably the mercenary thinks that it will, but that she is the one that has to do it because she's her friend. Uh huh. Um, but it, it doesn't actually kill her. It just lifts the curse. Okay. I I like the idea of it lifting the curse, but we can't. It's a bit too quick to have it. At the first thing that. Well, well, wait. It lifts the curse. How does it lift the curse? What did you spend the majority of time in Ocarina time doing? Finding the damn music so that way you knew what to do with it. She's got to find the music. Song. She has to. There we go. She has to find the song. Yeah. She has to find the song. Okay. Got it. So it's a magical harp that has the power to lift curses, but it only does that if you know the song. Yes. And you now we could. Now there's one or two ways we can approach this. We could approach it the way that she either finds the sheet music and plays it that way, or she. Because it's a fairy tale, aka kind of like a, a futuristic fantasy. Maybe she finds she has to find a companion that knows how to play a harp, and maybe mm -hmm. that our character, our mercenary, if they're a mercenary, they already know someone that knows how to play a harp, and that could be the next thing. So let me go get my friend. Okay. To play this, or, or not even a friend, not even a friend. Just I, I know, I know a well, satyr that knows how to play a harp. That's I I got an idea. Oh, oh sorry. Be a little bit too too much, um, given that this is like. Uh, sort of a story between these two. Um, yeah, yeah. 
It could be someone that they meet who, I don't know. I feel like, okay, here's a question. Do they know already that they need the harp? I, no, so I just answered it for myself because they just found a paper with it on. Right, they yeah. didn't know that. So, yeah. that, so part of their, there has to be some discovery. That's part of the fun. Is this mercenary discovering maybe what this what the harp does, like you said, and she, and she's trying to play it, trying to figure out what it does. And so there may be there may be a part where she has to go to get some answers about the harp, what it actually is, uh-huh. what it can do, and so forth. Well, let me um, okay. So let let me throw this idea out there and see and see what y'all think. So. So gets the harp when when they get the harp they realize okay so this harp can um, can break the curse uh, and the only way it can break the curse if it, if it plays the the ancient song freebird and so Perfect. they know <laughs> that the only person in in all of this land is the such and such that knows how to play Freebird, so they have Perfect. to go to that person. And when they go to that person, that and it, you know, and, and maybe we can do some kind of, you know, clever plot devices to make that that it's also in the kind of the same direction of the queen, so that way we're kind of saving time, efficiency, people. Um, and and I'm then sorry. good. Finish your Okay, well, I was just going to say, then they meet up with that person, and then through some convolute, like, they, they think that this person who, who knows how to play this magical Freebird song is going to be the one to do it, to break the curse, but something happens where that person dies, and now the mercenary is back having to do it, and, you know, like, I, I don't know, they're just throwing, throwing stuff out there. So, I like that, but like here's my thought. I like that, but fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay, we'll make it Stairway uh, stairway to Heaven. (laughs) (laughs) With with seven minutes of intro? Yeah. (laughs) Obviously. It should have been Stairway all the time. Um, So, okay. So, what if the only person who can play the song is the queen? Ooh. So the queen yeah. herself has to, because the, because the queen is wearing the damn crown in the first place. Indeed, yeah. and also she's a princess and could have been taught all of these like you know songs. She could have, um, you know, she's got the the yes. the oeuvre. Yes. Um, so and so the that's only it. the only way that the curse is going to be broken is if she herself plays the harp voluntarily, and it's the mercenary's job to make her want to. That's, and that becomes oh, okay. the greatest challenge of all, is how does this mercenary now figure out a way to get the queen herself, one, to get this queen, this harp, into the hands of the queen, and two, to get her to play it willingly, exactly. to break her own curse. And the yes. way that she's going to do that, I think, is because she's her friend. Uh, and that's and that's the reveal. And uh, yeah, that yeah, that's like, what why, I was about to say. Why, why would I give a shit? Yep, uh, perfect, I'm locking it in. I'm locking who it in. can okay. do it? Yeah. I'm locking it in. So, uh, Perfect. Now, before I get that, that'll be Act Three. Before I get to that of Act Three, um, so because I wanted to kind of backtrack a bit with what Nate was saying as far as the discovery goes. So once the once our mercenary gets the harp, does we that the mercenary doesn't automatically know right off the bat what the harp does, right? So he has or she is trying to figure out what it does or goes to someone first. Is that what we said? And well, then... I I think I think with the discovery, there's like etchings on the wall holograms in their eye sockets something that basically says by by picking up this harp you must play the magical song of uh, more than a feeling and then that will break thine curse and um and then (laughs) we just have the 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 yeti himself may tell her the yeti the yeti Yeti might just tell her like oh yeah potentially yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's still alive. He, she didn't kill him. I mean, we need like a, vi- a villain to monologue. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, we, uh, that, that's that's the staple of all storytelling. Yes. Okay. So the the Yeti just tells her basically. Oh, by the by the way, that harp is the only that can break the curse. Mm-hmm. But in order, to, but but the enemy starts laughing maniacally. Oh, by the way, she has to play it herself in order to break it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, something like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why you'll never succeed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Especially because the six the the sick riff on the third bar is really hard. <laughs> I think you need to join a band, Nate, to say Marl. 
two metal for you. Uh, it, two, I have two metal for you. And I mean, what we could do too, if just for the fun of it, we could have that this Yeti actually is the person that brought the curse object in the first place, which is why they know so much about to kind of bring it. Oh. Oh. So yeah, so when like the curse that. when the curse bomb went off, it turned him into or her. I guess it's him. It's him into uh, the beast, more or less. Oh, well, potential. I don't know if it. Okay. I don't know. This is the person. Like he's he's a yeti. He's a he's a creature of of snow and ice, and probably maybe a ruler of a separate kingdom who sent the crown. Ah, uh, yes. And, oh, he yeah. sent. He just sent it. Though. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He by sent the, it. By the way, like, I thought you were gonna say uh, of snow and ice. I, I come from a land of ice and snow. <laughs> I, I bet you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's immigrant song all the way. Immigrant song. All the way. Literally, <laughs> literally. Okay. All right. So perfect. So that's how it is. Um, so now that's how the discovery is made. So our mercenary sets out on a tra- on their path to go and actually meet the queen. Mm-hmm. And now we can cut back to our young princess uh, with her hands out outreach towards the uh, crown again. Mm-hmm. I don't think that we should. Do, I don't think that should be the visual. I think it should. We should show the immediate aftermath. So the crown is on her head. Everyone is dead, and she looks on in horror. Oh, okay. Okay. It, it, but skipping over that might be a little too questionable. People may, may not know what the crown, what happened, and, and, unless that's unless it's meant to be like it cuts to white and then the, and the yeah. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. I see what we get saying. the context from the yeti. Okay. Who, Oh yes, yes. As he as he monologues, he throws exactly. in the exposition, and then we, the audience, can put two and two together because they're not stupid. Yes, but I, but I like the idea of while he's monologuing, we're seeing the flashback of 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 the, the, our young princess putting the crown on. It's in a big white blur, and everything explosion, big ice explosion, and, and she's sitting all alone. Uh, yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So while so monologuing, oh my gosh, trying to spell this word is gonna kill me in half. Monologuing Yeti. Monologuing Yeti. That's his full name. <laughs> By the way, that's my official handle from now on. Please refer to me as such. My handle such. on Twitter. <laughs> so the monologuing Yeti uh, tells. Uh, tells the tale. I really like this. I feel like the entire plan is coming together. Finally. Here it is. All right. Uh, so, and then while the... Yep. Okay, so now, and obviously, just... For S and G's, could we have it that the, the monologue and Yeti is obviously laughing maniacally, and mm-hmm. our, bad, our badass mercenary like just punches him in the face? Because again, remember <laughs> this is this is her friend. I mean, mm-hmm. if, if, mean someone like, told, if, if someone told if someone told me, oh, by the way, I cursed like... Yari and I did it this way, I would punch him in the face after he laughed. I wouldn't just sit there. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, okay, so I don't know that the, the well, may, it, may... it would be a very satisfying character moment, but I don't know um, if killing the yeti is no, really an option no not killing not kill just punch him in the face well i, I think because I mean, then that would be then you know she would have to immediately like vamoose i think probably as part of the trial she probably gets like one up on him well i think fair yeah. i th- i think it would be it, it would be um an interesting thing to have it be where the yeti is kind of in a slightly compromised situation and then mm-hmm. and and like I'm getting I'm getting a vision of like uh uh, uh it uh, early in um in Batman Begins where uh he's he's teaching you know the, uh, where he's going through his training and he bests uh he thinks he bests uh uh who we find out to be Ra's al Ghul uh, and Ra's al Ghul and Ra's al Ghul says always pay attention to your thing and then he hits the ground and then he falls nice. into the water I'm getting a vision yeah. like that where the person is like laughs maniacally and then the you know the uh 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 they just do so they hit something do something that causes them to like fall or get hit or something and not die right. but it, it just it, yeah. it that that seems like uh, i don't know cooler like to me sequence. 
Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, because but yeah. I, so what if we actually lead into that where the, the Yeti is laughing? Almost. I know you guys have seen Predator, the first one, maybe in a while, but in the original Predator, after Arnold has the the Predator bested, uh, he's sitting there laughing, and and you see a little countdown in the, the alien language going off on his wrist, and he's sitting there laughing, and then Arnold realizes that's a self destruct because he's ready to go off. Yeah. Like while the Yeti is telling the story, and he starts laughing and everything, and the and the mercenaries watching him laugh, and because they're they're in his palace, he uh. knows very well he, he kind of activates something or pushes a, a, a ice pillar down or whatnot and it causes and the our hero has to pretty much run out of the palace as it's collapsing or, or, or trying to collapse on top of them they had to escape the palace mm. the last second mm. i like it but why would he blow up his own palace yeah yeah i think so and I, th- I i i think you well, got my 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 example wasn't clear. What I meant was while the Yeti's laughing and the Yeti's in this comp- compromised position, that that when he's in the middle of laughing, the the uh, they just get tired of it. And they, and when I say they, I mean the mercenary just gets tired of it Ooh. and just like cuts a rope or something and causes the Yeti to go flying. And oh, causes the yeah. Yeti. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can do it that way. That's, that's what I wanted the first time. Yeah, I wanted yeah. him to suffer actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what, I, and that's what I meant. Sorry, I wasn't clear. Okay. No, no. Uh, we we can I mean yeah so we can basically have it that if they're if this whole game they've been playing has been about trying to avoid traps or whatnot we can have it that the mercenary deliberately kind of sets off a little trap right onto mm-hmm. the yeti uh, yeah some kind yeah okay simple enough yeah while he's monologuing and you're laughing maniacally by the way Nate uh, while you were uh, doing what you're doing my official handle from now on is officially a monologuing yeti all my nails <laughs> that's awesome. Oh man. So um okay, so all right, so and that's so now, so now um and as already said, we kind of don't do we still want to cut back at all to oh oh we we don't need to cut back because while the Yeti was monologuing, we actually saw the flashback then of what happened after she put the crown on, how the kingdom fell fell to, to crap because yeah. of the ice yeah. and everything. Okay. And she ran away further away and and it, and it it just kept expanding over and over and never stopped expanding basically and so the only way to the only way the queen could try to keep the world safe was to get as far away from people as possible so mm-hmm. that the reach of yeah, the crown exactly. was 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 minimized essentially yeah um so we don't okay. have to cut back to the queen again that's 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 continuing that story basically it's from the perspective of the flashback story told by the yeti mm-hmm. um and so now we we cut back and we're with we can actually just cut right to the actual um, uh, mercenary trudging through like the, the harshest of the winds because as he's getting closer, and, I'm sorry, as she's getting closer and closer and closer mm-hmm. to uh, the actual, I guess, ice kingdom of our queen. Mm-hmm. I mean, after that, I feel like, yeah, it's basically, this is act three now. Yeah. Right. Now yeah. she goes to confront the queen. Yeah. Yes. Now, do we want to have it that there's any kind of a battle or a struggle between them at first? Because I, I imagine, too, it would be anticlimactic if he just walked in the door and just handed her the, the harp and said, it's me, it's your best friend. Uh-huh. It would probably be, she, she'd be a little more like the Ice Queen. It's been years, probably, since she had anyone come towards her. She may be very, she might like her isolation or whatever it is, or she may have a lot of self-loathing. And so when someone approaches, somebody try to blow them away. And it might be a matter of just like it's mercenaries' uh, fortitude or resilience trying to hold out as, to get as close to her as possible while the queen is deliberately trying to blow all kinds of gale winds and stuff at her. Yeah. That's just the struggle. It's just well, I think, yeah. That. Yeah, I definitely think there should be a battle between the mercenary and the mystic. Um, mm-hmm. And and because, but it, but it's a... It, you know, it's the mercenary knowing full well that she needs to, you know, she doesn't want to kill the queen. Um, but the queen is just like, just leave me alone. Like, if you would just leave, yeah, I exactly. wouldn't have to kill you. Um, yes. And and it's that back and forth between the two of them on that. I yeah. agree. Yeah. 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 And, and it, again, we, we don't, the audience doesn't know uh, that the struggle is that the mercenary is doing everything they can not to actually kill them, uh-huh. um, right? And at, same, and at then, the same time, the queen is, is all the queen also isn't trying to kill the person. It seems that they are, but they're not trying to kill them either. Yeah, and the the the, the, re- the reveal happens when the mercenary finally gets close enough to take their helmet off, mm-hmm. um, and mm-hmm. then the queen sees who they are and stops trying to kill them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
that, or so we could do it that way, or we could actually do it that it seems like the the plane actually like slams the mercenary up against the wall, and the mercenary may, may almost be virtually unconscious, and while the queen is oh. giving, like, delivering the death blow. That's juicy. Takes the helmet off. Take, she t- she like, removes the helmet. The mercenary never removes their own helmet. The, the queen does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then and then it kind of flash. And then the queen looks at her for a long time, and they just they just look. They just lock eyes with each other. And it's like a flashback where it shows the image of the queen with of the the princess mm-hmm. with her servant girl friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes. It, it, it hits her. Hits mm-hmm. her yep. 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 Like it. I love it. So I'm locking it in. Yes. Uh, it's actually a lot to lock in. But uh, <laughs> we're, we're in act three. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was locked so in. The mode. mercenary forges, forges forward through, or trudges, I guess trudges is the middle word. Trudges mm-hmm. forward through the I guess it's rain. Why forge when you can trudge? Trudge down. <laughs> trudge down. Forge truck. Yeah, I think this is great. Like, I, I, I really do like the idea of of the of the mercenary being incapacitated. Like, it wasn't her choice to to, to for yeah. the reveal, and then yeah. the reveal occurs. Um, trying uh, trying to think how they could. Well, there could be one thing too. Just to, just to put a little a little bit of ice on the cake. It, it may not, it may be too much, and I get it if you want to stop it. But once the queen removes the helmet and she's just looking at her, it could be as something as far as if this was like. Her servant, it could almost be this. She always has to say, kind of like the, thinking about Princess Bride, how Wesley always had to say, "As you wish." Uh-huh. It could be something as far as like, Ooh, I like she, that. She says some yeah. familiar line to her that that her servant girl always said to her, like, "As you wish," or y- y- "Yes, Your Majesty," or something like that. Something yeah. that, that, that triggers it oh. when she realizes realizes what who she's looking at. Yeah, like um uh ooh, 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 like so- something um. I'm thinking like every time the servant girl has to leave, it's customary to say, uh, say, you know, uh, uh, praise you, my queen or something like that. And when she takes it off, there's the beat, there's the realization. And then the mercenary says, praise you, my queen. And, and then it's just like, yes, perfect. Perfect. And it could be what it could be taking one step backward further. And it could be the queen's like, I warned you, if you stayed, I would have to kill you or something like that. Uh, And and it's like, die knowing, die die knowing your foolishness, whatever it is. Yes, and then basically she's like, and, and, and as she removes the helmet, she's like, uh, yes, yeah, she's acknowledging, like, yes, as you wish. Oh, yes, acknowledging your, your command, and uh-huh. I'll take my leave because what, because what you said. Yes. 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 Right, yes. Right. yes. You can figure out the details of what the lines are later on, but that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, obvi- yeah, yeah. obviously, like, we'll, we'll workshop that, but, but I think, and I think that's great. And I think, um, uh, and then, and then also kind of have, uh, I think there needs to be in that scene a little bit of, uh, like, kind of denial from the queen. Like, no, 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 you're dead. You're dead. You died. I killed you. You know, just like yeah. this. I think I think there needs to be like a like you almost like she's almost like gonna kill her anyway because she's like no you're you're tricking me this is magic this is not real you know yeah. and and then and then the girl starts saying things like that remind her like things the conversations that they had and everything that that only she would know which would bring her back to reality and then yes. get into the whole conversation cool. by the way can you play the sick riff <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before like she's like yeah um i'll i'll take my leave or uh, buy or leave my queen um yes but before i go mm-hmm. i want to keep this piece of you with me would uh-huh. you play me yes or something yes. like that mm-hmm. yes that's a hell of a yeah, lot more yeah, eloquent yeah, she, than yeah, what i said she may not even <laughs> yeah she may not even tell her what what's going to happen she just yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. I need you to play this totally rad riff. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, 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 uh, not to break up the riffs, but what if what if the the mercenary themselves doesn't even exactly know how it's going to work with the harp? But she yeah. pretty much just gives her the harp, and in true yeah. fairy tale fashion, once she has the harp, she just starts playing it, and it actually does break it. She yeah, yeah. The yeah. So the harp it. itself, it's not like she needs a song. It's uh-huh. just right. that she about the song. Play a song on it. Yeah. Yes. yes exactly. Okay. Oh, okay. That, that, yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay. I'm locking it in. All right. I'm saying the epic battle. I'll say that the queen and the, and the mercenary do epic battle, and then the queen plays an epic riff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the totally sick, absolutely vile um, <laughs> sound of uh, Are You Going to start? <laughs> You're gonna peel the paint off the walls, man. 
And yeah, also break that whole curse thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, the wall safe, too. Wall safe. Yes. All right. Well, I think um, that actually is good, and that takes us to uh, to the end. We, uh, yeah. we, we well, that is all the time we have for today. So we'll let Perfect. Ethan finish right. up his notes, yes. and he can give us a rundown. I'll do a, a wrap up. Yeah, I'll do a quick wrap up. Everything right, yeah. we discussed as best I can. Uh, Guys, I would go one thousand percent see this movie and or. Uh, any what what do you mean like read this book mm -hmm. anything yeah of course <laughs> that's gonna be the problem with this format is that we're gonna like every one we do we're gonna be like oh yeah uh, we want to do more <laughs> <laughs> i hope i hope that's an embarrassment of riches if that's what happens <laughs> you know. well the, be the beauty of it is and this is also where the audience where you get to come into this is that yes uh if you if you like this story or want to see more of the story in any capacity whether it be artwork or a fleshed out scene or even it's a sequel to the story uh, anything more details what have you uh, let us know please hit us up uh either through our emails or instagram right here on twitch any way you want on facebook our facebook page let us know and we will gladly continue this story um so and mm -hmm. that's where if you want to have some bring in some other elements yourself like you said well i want to i want to design the heart myself or i want to have the i want to write the music for it uh have, a, have an original song lined up whatever it is please let us know and we'll gladly feature it mm -hmm. uh, for the story. Mm -hmm. yes okay so i will go ahead and get thinking of wrapping up things up i will go ahead and give a quick rundown of this story and then we can be on our way for the evening right. oh yeah all right, so I'll, I'll do the entire story, as it were. Once upon a future, it was cold. There's a tournament of champions to determine who will be sent out to slay the Ice Queen that is causing such an a icy world. Uh, the, it's a massive last man standing brawl in a futuristic coliseum. Think Maximus from uh, Gladiator, but in the future. Our hero, the champion, emerges the victor and is sent out on their mission. With nothing more than their wits and their own means, basically. The champion heads towards uh, the coldest area of the map, because that's where they believe the queen would be locked up or held up. On their journey, the champion comes across the corpse of a previous champion and finds a clue on their body. It's the, it's the kind of like the graphic or the image of a harp, a futuristic looking harp. We cut to the past uh, and see a huge gala where an orchestra is playing music. A young, happy princess is enjoying the festivities. Um, but she sneaks away from this, uh, from the main gala, which is actually the, the queen's birth, and this, and she sees the treasure room where all the presents are being locked up. Uh, she looks through the keyhole and sees a glowing object, and of course, because she's a precocious young uh, lady, she wants to get to it. Uh, her best friend, the servant girl, is the only one with the key, and she reluctantly gives the key over to the princess, and she says her patented line as far as what she always says when the queen asks, when the queen, when the princess asks her to do something. Um, and, the, and then we see the princess's hand as it draws closer towards the glowing crown. Then we cut back to the present with the mercenary, and we see that the mercenary has arrives at an ice palace. Uh, think Star Wars: The Return of the Jedi, Ice Job of the Huts. Uh, once the, the mercenary gets inside, the, the Yeti Lord is sitting upon his throne, and he challenges the mercenary to a game. And whoever wins this game is to have the harp. The mercenary and Yeti both play very dirty in this game, but in the end, the mercenary emerges victorious and stands over the downed Yeti. The Yeti starts monologuing, uh, as most villains do, and talks about how what the harp will actually be, that the harp itself is, will be used or is needed to break the curse of the queen. And the Yeti knows this because the Yeti was the one that actually sent the cursed object over to the kingdom in the first place. And the monologuing Yeti uh, starts laughing maniacally like an idiot. And while he <laughs> does this, uh, the, mer the mercenary sets off a trap to crush or stop the Yeti in some, in some way. Now, the mercenary continues to trudge forward through the worst of the icy climate and gets to the, uh, I guess we call it the, the the throne room of the Ice Queen. The Ice Queen is very uh, 
uh, it's been several years since he's seen anybody, so the Ice Queen is very angry and very, um, I guess, kind of in her own world and doesn't want to be bothered by anybody, uh, no matter how friendly they might seem. As the mercenary is trying to just reason and talk to the Queen, the Queen opens up all kinds of icy uh, powers on her, and the mercenary uses every trick she has in the book to try to, try to survive and do epic battle with the Queen, at the same time trying not to actually harm her. Eventually, after this long battle, the, the Ice Queen emerges victorious, and she's standing over her felled mercenary. And as she's getting ready to slay the mercenary, she removes their mercenary's helmet, and the mercenary says the same familiar line from before when they were kids. And the, and the Ice Queen realizes that she's standing, she's looking over her servant girl, best friend, from when she was a child. The last person she saw, basically, before the world ended. Um, and then the mercenary just hands over the... the Harp to her, to her, to the queen, to her friend, and as the queen is sitting in her in her icy throne, she starts playing a song, and the song and the song lifts the curse uh, of the icy land, and they all live happily ever after. <laughs> nice, ah, oh. fantastic, epic. Right. <laughs> that was freaking epic. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And that, my friends, is how it works. That is how creativity and progress build a story from the ground up, and you get to help. Yes. Mm -hmm. So like I, like I said before, uh, anyone out there listening, either in Twitch or to the podcast, please feel free to hit us up with any ideas or suggestions you have for the story. If you want to see more, let us know in any capacity. Yes. And, uh, and yeah, always, uh, we're going to be... Uh, check us out here on Twitch. Uh, we've got stuff on YouTube and the podcast and all that. So creativity in progress. Uh, check us out. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Thanks a lot. Y'all have a wonderful day.